five, closer to that opening quote of two dollars twenty and two dollars forty. Now you've got for Enfar clear clearly dominates the turnover. Animo now into $6 from nine fifty when he opened. He's drawn out. That suits him today. The race pattern six fifty. He's solid in the market. Out to eight fifty. General Bow. They jumped on when they paid the late nom to $5.50 but that's out to eight fifty now. Ingratiating. He gets a beautiful run here and he's also been specced. Ingratiating $10 into eight fifty is a nice go in the Blue Diamond. Artorias kept safe 13 to 12. Arcaded 16 into 12. He needs. She needs to get off the fence Jigsaw at $18 and Construct was specced at a massive price at $71 into $21. OK, Animo now into $650, but it's all about Enthar, the big girl. Let's have a look at her in the mounting yard. Well, pick seven, Hutchie. We're not too far away from the Blue Diamond. We'll have a look at them in the yard shortly, but how many are still alive? Seven people still alive. Three of them actually with General Bow, uh, Zed, and then we've got uh, single picks uh, for a few of the others. We've... Uh, Finance Tycoon's one, um, uh, Artorius is the other, Animo and Enthar. So there you have it. Let's go to the yard. This mounting yard is proudly brought to you by Saini. Moving tomorrow today. 51st running of the classic race, the Neds Blue Diamond Stakes for the two-year-olds. Group one, $1.5 million in prize money. And horse number one's this Colt by Brazen Bow for the Ellen Zara team and Jamie Carr, a third-generation homebred from David and Jenny Moody. It is General Bow. They paid the late entry fee to get the run in the prelude. And, uh, look, his form this prep has been terrific. Going to probably try and navigate away from that inside section, but uh, he doesn't really have to improve on what we've seen, Zed, uh, this time in. He's a, just such a little competitor. He puts himself in a good position. He has a great racing style. I would assume Jamie Carr would be keen to get away from the inside section from that low draw, um, but they might get an opportunity to get behind something and chase today, which they've been suggesting they want to do. And Jane, it's been a decade since Sepoy was the last horse to win the preview, the prelude, and win the Blue Diamond. Can he do it? He's parading like a horse that can do it. Uh, it's a perfect parade for a Group 1 assignment. He's a consummate professional. Physically, mentally, he ticks all the boxes. And here's the Talon Dirt winner, the first of the Godolphin runners in ingratiating star witness in 2010, won the Talon Dirt and then backed up and won the Blue Dime. He's on the back up with, uh, with those um, blinkers work well, wonders last week. Look, he's a, he's a very fit horse and he's a very talented horse. He's got a little bit to find on Enthar the last time they met, but maybe 1,200 will suit. Well, that's the big question mark. Is 1,200 metres going to suit the favourite? Where I think it'll suit ingratiating the way that he finished off last week at Flemington. It looked was a pretty soft victory and he looks like he's backed up in good shape, Jane. Yeah, for Physically improved with racing and handling the back up perfectly. He got himself a little bit worked up with the blinkers on for the first time last start. Back to his professional self today. So Tom Dabernig and Ben Hayes, they combined with uh, David to win with Catchy. Team up with Luke Nolan, who's won it with reward for effort with Finance Tycoon. Well, we've seen one uh, gallop go to Queensland and, yes, baby, yes, come back and win first up. Sometimes uh, that trip doesn't uh, really worry them. And he did win while he was over there as well. Um, he might be a little bit big on what we've seen, but uh, he'll probably need a touch of luck from where he's drawn. He's an athletic colt. That's what I like so much about him is his athleticism. He's got a bit of size and stretch, bright in the yard and fit. Horse number four is uh, Pegasi. Uh, this is where the Kerry McAvoy story really kicked off when he won with True Jewels 20 years ago. Uh, Tony and Calvin McAvoy are the trainers. This is the Colt by Star Turn. Ran third, of course, to Profiteer in the English Millennium. And that was a good run, but this is even, uh, I think, more required to, to be figuring here. And probably needs a touch of luck as well and, and probably a career best for, on his fourth career start. Can't make any comparisons, haven't seen him previously, but he's pretty alert on race day, gets his head up, has a good look around and is on toes, therefore has got himself a little bit warm. Horse number five is Anima, who, uh, the Colt by Street Boss out of Animato. She was a quality filly. In fact, she ran over in uh, in the Hollywood Oaks over in in America. Quality performer. I think. Look, if the favourite doesn't turn up on what we've seen, Zed, this is the the, the the horse that could well win, and he might better win it anyway. He got the blinkers going on in 1200, and he was an eye catch behind General Bow in the prelude. They're the two key factors for me. Blinkers and out to 1,200 metres. The wide draw, perfect. He'll come blend into the race. He'll be swinging deep off the home turn. He's got to be a very, very big chance in this race. His last start parade and his parade today is like chalk and cheese. Uh, he was a bit of a lad first up, very fresh. He's lovely and relaxed with the blinkers on this afternoon. Lloyd Kennewell had two runners, loses one with a scratching. Here's Ab Sailor. Who needs to improve. The good win first up, then in the preview was pretty well held. Uh, 
just no match for a few rivals there, but um, they'll roll forward from a wide gate and uh, good luck to Connections. He's come on in the coat, but he has lightened up since the last time I saw him on race day and he's been a little bit toey, and so therefore, because of the warm overhead conditions, he's got himself warm. Friedman Stable won the race with Liar. They're putting the blinkers on Artorias for start number three. Gee, it was an impressive one at Hillside. Uh, the clock was OK. Um, some good late splits there. Not sure about the format of the race. Not sure what his best distance will be. But, uh, look, he's with a stable that can produce him and target these kind of races with a lot of success. It's a well put together colt. You can't knock him physically. He's got strength where he needs it. And he's another one that's very professional on race day. Carries himself well and does everything right. He'll be in my numbers. Michael Walker, who won the race last year with Tagaloa, is on board. Uh, homebred for the Alderson family. Uh, bred and retained by Lynn and Cole and Cindy Trains. Michael Walker rides Jigsaw. He got a nice... Well, look, he didn't get a nice run, I should say, uh, behind General Bow in the prelude. And he probably will get a much better run today. He's still improving. He's still learning. And if he relaxes and gets a more economical run round to an extent and can find the right spot, he could run a big race. He's an athletic colt. Colt. He's absolutely gr glowing in the coat, and he's got a great disposition. So again, he's one that ticks boxes. Cost six hundred and fifty thousand at the Magic Million sales. He wears the colours of China Horse Club. He's got an element of quality about this colt by him. Invincible called Construct. Yeah, I like his first run at Caulfield. He just sort of was a bit lost through m much of that race. They've got the blinkers going on today. His late splits were good, and I just think he could be a bit of a sharp improve. If you're looking one for as a knockout chance, it's it's him for me. It's $31. Yeah, look, he's a lovely colt. He's strong. He's balanced. He's got a lot of physical upside. Carries himself nicely. But today, with the blinkers on, he's got himself quite worked up in the yard. We never saw that last start. Tens are scratching. Hitotsu, the colt by Maurice, uh, who's having its second uh, career start. What a thrill it'd be for Wendy Kelly and the owners to win. Absolutely, and look, it was a, I thought it was a very good debut, to be honest. It's just his second career start today, and he raced a bit in patches, as you'd expect on, on debut, but uh, it just depends how much he's come on for that. He's certainly got a nice pedigree. Yeah, physically, he's going to appreciate the step up to 1,200 metres. He's a nice enough cold. Another one that's got himself warm today, but it, he handles himself well, so just a bit of a free sweater. First of our fillies has gone out onto the track. Uh, she is the favourite, the written tycoon, unbeaten filly, Entha. She's been, she couldn't have been more impressive at either start now. She's been a little versatile, how you can ride her. The wide uh, draw's not the issue, as, as we know. The issue's been uh, that little vet check during the week. Um, I just look at it like this. She's here, she's here to race. She's been past clear to run. I'm assuming she's going to bring her A game, and if she does, I think she'll be too good. She's a big filly. She's a strong filly. She doesn't look out of place against the Colts. Uh, she's been relaxed enough in the way she's paraded, but again, she's one that's got herself very warm in the mounting yard. Damien Lane looking for a treble. Can he uh, add a blue diamond to his golden slipper? He's on board the uh, Godolphin filly, Arcaded. She's a winner. On the clock, it wasn't as good as the boys, but, um, you know, you can only beat what you put up against, and she's been pretty soft in each one of those. She will need a bit of luck. The gate one is even more of a negative. Now, I thought it was a negative when I was doing my map, and it's going to need luck at a key time. She's pint size. She's not much to look at, but she's got one of the best attitudes you'll see in the mounting yard. She stayed nice and dry. She did not turn her hair wandering around. She's got an attitude that's going to take her a long way. Owned and bred by Neville Murdoch uh, from the first crop of Wolf Cry is this filly called Wolves. Liked the first run. Last time I thought it was just a, just a fair effort, but D done on board. Good luck to Dwayne. Great to see him back at the races, and he certainly knows how to win this race. Good bodied filly. She's got a lot of athleticism. 1,200 metres suits. She looks better than her price. And we get to a filly by Headwater that costs just $2,000 as a weanling. What a story it'll be, and especially for Gemma Riley, the trainer. Absolutely, and oh, I thought it was uh, a decent run on, on debut. Didn't Like I said, the girls' race didn't rate as well as the boys, but... They all improve at different lengths. She's certainly going to need to improve on what we saw there. Yeah, look, she's engaged, she's bright, she's well prepared. She'll give herself every chance. All right, Hutch and Brent Zarafa, your top four in the classic, the Blue Diamond. I'm with Anthar. She's been supremely impressive. And like I said, I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, she's turned up here. So I'm presuming that it all is well now. The Animo, for me, it's just the race predominantly between those two. Uh, General Bow run well, I think constructed a price, but I think An Anthar or Animo wins this. I've flipped it around. I'm backing Animo and I'm saving on Anthar. Two have drawn wide. I like both their preparations. Animo's probably paraded a bit better today, but that's not to say that um, Anthar can't come out and run well out to 1,200 metres. The market trending in the direction of both these horses. My main bet, Animo, and I'll be saving on Anthar.
Animo on top for me. I just think his parade today just proves that he was getting ready for this particular race. The 1,200 metres is going to suit him on type. He was lovely and relaxed with the blinkers on. A stark contrast to what we saw from him first up when he was a bit fresh in the yard. He goes on top for me. Outside of that, ingratiating, he was much more relaxed on the back up today. I think that's a good sign. And two outside of the market that really caught my eye were Artorias and Jigsaw. I don't think that this is a one-horse race. All right, 2.40 into $2.25 now for the favourite. Punters have rallied late for the... Uh, well, when she opened up, she was very popular. And she holds three times as much as Animo and also General Bow. So that's how popular the favourite Enthar is to win the Blue Diamond. $2.25, $5.50 Animo. Has he supporters that wide gate? She's on with Jane, ingratiating. Looked fantastic in the yard. Into eight fifty two as he supports steady at the nine. Now, General Bow today, five fifty out to $10 from that inside gate, maybe. It's not the place to be. Five to ten off looks to be the place to be here for the Blue Diamond. But they got good jockeys on them like Arcadia and Damien Lane can extricate himself off the fence. $14 if he wants to, if they open it right up. Jesus is an open race. There won't be a market money mover. There's a great shift of money for the favourite Enthar, but there's a good spread outside of that. Get your bets on. Kira Ma joins me, the trainer of the favourite Enthar. There's been uh, a lot of talk about her over the last week. She was past fit to race. She's paraded very nicely today. Are you happy with her? Uh, yeah, I'm very happy, actually. Um, she was very calm out the back. Uh, she naturally perks up a bit when she gets into the yard. Uh, she seems very, very similar. She's done, you know, all the work we needed to do with her and, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with her. What is it about this filly that's not only given you confidence but given punters confidence? Well, I think she's, she's just very, uh, I suppose, natural, I suppose. She's, uh, these two-year-olds, early two-year-olds, the ones that sort of get going early are the ones uh, that just do it themselves and... Uh, you know, she's a big, strong girl and uh, she, she sort of knows what she's doing from the time we put a bridle on her. So she's got an action, she's got strength and uh, she's got a lot of speed. So I suppose that's what has drawn them to her. That speed, can we see it consistently and uh, out to the 1,200 metres? Sorry? Can we see her with that speed out to the 1,200 metres? Uh, I think so. Uh, there's nothing to suggest she won't run 1,200 metres. She knows she breathes well, she's fit. Um, uh, Mark knows her really well, so if he just, you know, I, I didn't tie him down with the instructions. I just said to um, just have her travelling where she's comfortable and in a rhythm and um, uh, hopefully she can get the job done. So in your mind it doesn't matter where she settles in the run as long as she settles? No, I don't think so. No, you'd see her first start, she sat, sat outside a couple of horses and last start she bounced really quickly and just sort of put herself there. So, yeah, I don't really mind where she is. Good luck with her. Thanks very much. There's Kira Ma. He's got a, an abundance of confidence in his filly, Enthar. But one thing you do notice when she heads down to the start with the clerk of the course, yes, it is warming up here. It's getting quite uh, steamy, but she was getting quite sort of um, warm underneath the saddle. She's perspiring. She's sweating more profusely than a few of the other runners. But because these are juveniles and they're only sort of lightly raced horses, we, we haven't had the biggest profile to say whether, you know, that's going to be adverse to her... Um, chances, um, but she certainly is getting quite warm. Yeah, a lot of them are now as well. It's really started to heat up, hasn't it, uh, from where it was earlier, but uh, you know, what a race this is going to be. Uh, Zedji, we've got some nice horses. She's been she's been pretty well supported, so um, it'd be interesting tactically for Mark Zara. What does he do? I think the way the track's played, it, it, it'll put his mind at ease a little bit. He could doesn't cover need to ground, rush to get doesn't need to rush, just stay out in better lanes and hopefully let her do her thing and uh, Mind you, it gives Animo a good chance to do his thing. They're moving in. Let's get to Matt Hill. Jamie Carr goes into that low draw. Jigsaw coming forward. Animo in the hands of the clerk of the course at the moment. And so too Absaila. Construct waits its turn. Enthar has been with the clerk of the course right from the mounting yard over to the gate. She looks pretty relaxed. The Totsu... And Wolves mill around also with Finance Tycoon. They fill the stalls on the tote in part 230. It's down to 235 on VOP. And another call comes through and Animo firms half a point. He could have got $7 early for this cold Animo, now $5.50. Three Godolphins here. Willie Pike wears the normal sets on ingratiating Damien Oliver with the white distinguishing cap. And Damien Lane with Arcade it has the red cap. 
Finance Tycoon comes up, ingratiating on the quick backup. Hard to do. The Tell and Dirt winner. About to join the line, Absela and Enthar will just about complete it over there. So ingratiating goes in. Animo just away from the other runners at the moment. There's Enthar, the favourite has gone forward. 2.30 the tote, 2.35 official price. Absela, who's a bolter here, and Animo, they look to be the final two for a special race, the Ned's Blue Diamond Stakes. Animo takes a wide alley with Damien Oliver. He had the choice up to the last minute before acceptances, and he chose Animo. Takes a wide stall. Ab Sailor is the final one. Construct standing patiently with Finance Tycoon. Now Ab Sailor, just a shade reluctant. Tendon, just trying to get hold of the mouth. There might even just be a slight adjustment required with Ab Sailor. Uh, Toria stands patiently with Hitotsu. So a few nerves jangling, I'm sure, in the barriers and amongst the owners anticipating the start. This field of 14 for the Blue Diamond. Absela comes forward out wide and they're locked away. Set to go. Ready. Racing in the diamond, Artorius was slow, in far away cleanly with Ab Sailor, and also showing a bit of speed towards the inside, Finance Tycoon, Jigsaw and General Bow. In far deep on the track is right up there too, and also disputing the front running is Pagazi as they settle down. A length and a half away next as Enthar is tracking very deep on the track to lead them clearly now from Jigsaw, General Bow, Finance Tycoon. Next out deeper on the track is Ab Sailor, two lengths away, arcaded, ingratiating, Construct and then came Pagazi and Janibi from Wolves. Well, back in the field, Animo with Artorius and Atotsu last. So it's Enthar up towards the turn at the 500. Clearly, two and a quarter. Jigsaw, General Bow, Finance Tycoon, then Ab Sailor ingratiating Construct, cutting the corner, arcaded. Then came Animo, the widest. Further back, Wolves in traffic from Artorius, Janibi, Hitotsu, and Pagazi. It's Enthar at the 200 metres from General Bow. Finance Tycoon ingratiating running on. Enthar has has a fight. General Bow coming out of Finance Tycoon ingratiating and Artorius is flying at the 50. Artorius pounces, bombs them and wins. Artorius from ingratiating. Photo third. Animo from Finance Tycoon. General Bow in far got swamped. Followed further back in the field by Construct and then Wolves Jigsaw and Atotsu a gap arcaded. Absailer well back. Pagazi and Janibi won the Blue Diamond and the Freedmans combined with Luke Curry to do it again like they did it with Liar. But this time there's a very special element and it is young Sam Friedman is a Group 1 winning trainer. He's been able to do it in a great race, the Blue Diamond for Brad Taylor, for everyone involved. Steve Adams is there. They are beside themselves in the colours that were made famous here at Caulfield by Mummify, amongst many other really good horses that the Freedmans have owned. Well, the FBI are back in a big way. It's the next generation. Artorius wins, defeats ingratiating in a photo. Finance Tycoon loomed up. Animo flashes late as well to be in the mix for a photo. What a story it'll be. We can't wait to have a chat to Sam Friedman. He is a Group 1 winning trainer. He wins the Blue Diamond with Dad Anthony Artorius. And what a story for Luke Curry. This time last year, he missed the ride on Hanseatic after that nasty fall at Mooney Valley. It was the favourite for the Blue Diamond. He was off the scene through injury then for the best part of six or seven months. So it's been some sort of redemption here to be able to then get the Blue Diamond that Last year, he thought he probably had one hand on. Gets over the top of Ingratiating, who looked the winner on the quick backup. And it appears as though Animo has just got the photo for third over Finance Tycoon. But we'll have to wait for the official numbers to come through. But looking at the, uh, the print here, it seems as though Animo's got the, the job done. There's so many stories that uh, sort of rise out of a blue diamond. But for me personally, to see the smile on Luke Curry's face and for what he's been through in the past 12 months, that is a great moment. Let's get to Sam Friedman with Jason Richardson. Well, the winner of the Blue Diamond is Artorius Luke Curry. The winning rider, Anthony and Sam Friedman, win the Blue Diamond. Sam, you're a Group 1 winning trainer. Congratulations, mate. No, thanks very much, Richard. Look, it's, um, 
it's a big thrill. It's uh, yeah, look, there's a big team behind us both, and you, know, you can't do it without all the staff. And this horse has spent a lot of time at both Pinecliff and and Flemington, and. Um, yeah, look, it's just a huge thrill. You worked with your dad when you won with Lyre only a couple of years ago with Luke Curry. You had worked with him with Hanseatic. Uh, what does it feel like to have your name in the book today? Yeah, well, look, it's it's a, it's a great feeling. But, um, look, as I said, I mean, there's, there's so many people behind this horse and we're a big team. We've got some really good loyal staff. Um, Rebecca Smith at Pinecliff, Steve Adams, Brad Taylor, Leanne Fielding, um, all our riders up at Flemington. I mean, it's, it's just a big team effort and... Yeah, it's just a huge thrill. Tell us about this guy, uh, a colt by Flying Artie. You put the blinkers on today for the first time. Was that the key? It definitely was. Look, we, we gave thought to the blinkers, to be honest, before Sandown, and um, we thought we'd give him the benefit of the doubt again, and um, he was dominant, so then we had a bit of a think. I actually liaised with Daniel O'Sullivan, who does a lot of ratings and form, and sort of said, look, how, how much do we have to make up on these sort of horses? And he thought we've got to make four or five lengths up. Uh, we tended to agree, and the blinkers, you know, we didn't have him on his trial last week, and he was very lazy, so, um, yeah, look, they've sharpened him up. He worked strongly Tuesday, and he's come here and done it today. What about the barnstorming finish? At one stage, he looked about five lengths off them, and the blink of an eye, he'd hit the front. Yeah, look, it was sort of shades of his sire there, but he, he went one better, so um, the son of Flying Artie, he's a very valuable horse now, and yeah, as I said, I mean, you watch replays of Extreme Choice and Flying Artie going, going at it, and Flying Artie was obviously very unlucky, and I was supposed to have his son sort of finish off and, and go one better at the big thrill. Can you remember when you first saw him? He's purchased at 125,000 the Magic Millions. Can you remember him as a, as a young horse? Yeah, look, he was very immature. Um, he probably looked like he was six months off being a developed yearling. And to be honest, I, I didn't love him. Dad, Dad liked him. Dad's a very good judge of a yearling. And, you know, we thought he was very immature. We gave him time. And honestly, just in the last six months, he's just turned into a beast. So 1,200 um, is probably short of his best in terms of his distance. He's a horse that, you know, will be targeting a guineas in the spring. You're glad you joined the family tra tradition? Yeah, look, it's, it's, yeah, it's very nice. And I suppose having the family colours on today is um, a nice touch. It certainly is, mate. Uh, enjoy this special win. Well done. Cheers. Thanks, Richard. Well, this is where the winner was near last, back on the inside with it all to do. But as we roll the tape... Entha, we know she's fast. She was put to the test at 1,200 metres, and at this stage, you'd have to say that it was just a little bit of a bridge too far. Um, but Artorius just picked his way through the field. Willie Pike on ingratiating has, has ridden a perfect race. He got to the outside of Finance Tycoon. He would have thought, oh, hello, I'm a big chance of winning here. Luke Curry's had to wait for the run, get to the outside of... Um, the runner-up and has absolutely launched late. This is going to be a terrific interview. Luke Curry with Jason. Hey. Oh, the smile says it all, Luke yeah, Curry. Congratulations. <laughs> You've got another blue diamond, mate. Uh, describe that last 400 metres. Yeah, well, I, um, um, I thought he was a chance, but um, sort of raced a little bit on and off and, and um, through the run. I, I knew he was getting a good run through, but um, I thought he might struggle late just because he hadn't really had a chance to really travel down to Quicken, but um, he just kept coming. It was uh, it was a, it was an amazing feeling the last bit. He's a pretty special colt, mate. You've been through hell and back. We've, we've been talking about that. Uh, moments like this, though, that just makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, it was uh, I missed this day last year with the, with the fall the night before, so um, uh, it's been a much, much better weekend this weekend than this time last year, but. Um, yeah, it uh, makes it all worthwhile. I look around for Sophia and apparently uh, couldn't get a babysitter and said, don't worry, I'm not going to win. No, all, all, the, <laughs> all, the, uh, all the girls are here watching and um, she's missed out. So she came last time, but usually most of the, the big winners I've ridden, she's missed. So um, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> she, might be, she might be the omen to stay at home. <laughs> and teaming up with the Freedmans again, they've done a remarkable job to produce this guy today. Yeah, um, you know, they... Um, they were tossing up whether whether to come here and um, or, or wait and sort of put him out to seven furlongs, which what is probably what he looked like he he would um, thrive from uh, at sand, after his Sandown win. Um, and I went down and, and jumped him out early in the week at Balnarring, and um, they decided to put the blinkers on him. And, and they just they just tried and tested guys that that know what they're doing and, and the whole team there and. Uh, that's why they, they produce good winners like they do. A brilliant win. You're a big part of it, mate. Uh, enjoy that. Great stuff. Thank you. He's a tough Taswegian. Tazzy will be going off there. Luke Curry, what a champion jockey.